More on the story now as we begin with Tim Stackpole. He's a freelance reporter in Sydney who's been covering the story. Take me through any other details that you've been covering that I, I didn't mention there. Yes, well, Heather, we know that the Canadian man is from Manitoba. He's out here on a tourist visa for one year, visiting his girlfriend, as you say, wheelchair-bound, though. And Australia is absolutely disgusted at the news as we heard it today. And, in fact, the news is still unfolding as we speak. We'll get an update on that from the police in just a moment. But the man himself was attacked repeatedly. This 16-year-old youth that you see in that video, that dramatic video, came back again and again and attacked this man, even with parts of his own wheelchair. Now, as I say, the community here is outraged. This of Sydney is a little way from the coast. Perhaps the crime rate is a little bit higher than we'd like to see in Sydney in that suburb. But to be honest, no one would have expected a man in a wheelchair to be attacked at a railway station in this city, Heather. For more on this, I'm joined now on the line from Sydney. Uh, freelance reporter Tim Stackpool is joining us. Uh, Tim, thanks for being with us. Can you first of all bring us up to date on the condition of the victim? Yes, he is indeed in a stable condition, as you report. That was surgery that took place on him was to uh, correct the uh, abrasions and some of the, the deep gashes that he received during the attack. So we're talking about uh, uh, some stitching. There's not so much news on the reports of uh, depressions to his skull. Now, his girlfriend has described those as fractures. Our original reports were that he was suffering depressions of the skull. But it could well be that he didn't have a concussion, which uh, is lucky for him. But we're not, we don't think we're talking about anything like uh, brain swelling or severe critical conditions in, in that respect. Marcia. So he is expected to pull through? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it wasn't expected that he had, had critical, uh, critical injuries at all, but uh, this was such a vicious attack. It was shocking, as you saw in that CCTV footage. And as you say, the two youths, 16 and 15 years old, the 15-year-old uh, is appearing in court right now. It's just gone 10 a.m. in Sydney. The courts are in session. As you say, uh, bail will be refused. But, yes, they will be tried uh, in the children's court. We're still waiting to hear when the second assailant will appear. The first assailant will appear in court again on April the 8th. So a little while away before we even find out if there's any motive for this attack. At the moment, it looks as though there is none. It was uh, purely random. Now, Tim, uh, first of all, can you give us, uh, can you tell us how he's doing? Yes, good morning, Seamus. Look, he's, he's recovering in hospital and it will take some time. As you just heard in that report, he's uh, received surgery and will probably undergo some more surgery for those depression fractures that he sustained. But one of the interesting things that his caregiver uh, was talking about today off the record was, of course, the psychological impact of, uh, of this attack on the victim. In Australia, we have things that are presented in court called victim impact statements. And uh, those uh, impact uh, statements will be presented uh, to the court case when these two young assailants are presented to the court coming up in April. April 8 and 11, I think, are the two separate court dates for the two uh, uh, separate accused and that victim's impact statement will have an effect although it is not direct evidence it will have an effect on perhaps uh, the the sentence that the judge will hand out to these these two kids as they are Seamus they are uh, they will appear in uh, children's court they won't be tried as adults